Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Just a short recap, in the first part of this video, I talked about two prenatal supplements to boost your fertility, MTHF, the active folate, and vitamin B12. Today I will go through a few more supplements I took during my pregnancy journey that helped me conceive my son in the first month of trying after a series of miscarriages. So stay focused and let's get started. The first supplement we'll talk about today is coenzyme Q10, or also known as CoQ10. CoQ10 is a powerful antioxidant that plays a crucial role in energy production within our cells. Just as your car is powered by gas, your heart and organs are powered by cellular energy. It exists in every cell of your body and is regularly made by our body. Mostly, we create enough CoQ10 to meet demands, but as we age, our CoQ10 concentration in parts of the body, including the female eggs, declines. CoQ10 exists in two forms, ubiquinone and ubiquinol. There are lots of conflicting information available about the preferred form of CoQ10. Depending on our body's needs, our body converts between the two forms continuously. Therefore, it's not the form of CoQ10 that matters, but rather the way it is prepared. CoQ10 supplements are available in many forms, including soft gels, capsules, tablets, and oral sprays. Several studies show that the best absorbable formulations are those in soft gel capsules. So why do we need CoQ10 when trying to get pregnant? A woman's eggs are formed while she is a baby growing in her mother's womb. Those eggs remain dormant until they are recruited to mature and ovulate. This maturation process takes three to four months. During that time, the health of the maturing egg will be influenced by the health of the mother. This is much like a tomato growing in the garden. The health of the tomato will be greatly influenced by the health of the garden, such as the water, the soil, the sunshine, and the nutrients available. Since CoQ10 is a powerful antioxidant, the benefit of this antioxidant stretches to both egg and sperm health. Eggs are particularly vulnerable to oxidative stress due to their high lipid content, and CoQ10's antioxidant properties might help to reduce this damage, which keeps the eggs healthier. Furthermore, eggs require a great amount of energy for proper maturation and development. Since CoQ10 is involved in producing energy that cells need, having adequate CoQ10 levels may support optimal energy production within the egg cells. As previously mentioned, CoQ10 levels also decrease as we age. A 2015 study showed that suboptimal levels of CoQ10 can lead to egg deficits and age-associated declines in fertility. The good news is that the same study produced results indicating that supplementing CoQ10 can help to reverse the age-related decline in egg quantity and quality. In simpler terms, CoQ10 can help support egg quality as you age. So then how much CoQ10 should I actually take? There is actually no set dose for CoQ10. Recommended doses range from 100 to 600 milligrams per day for fertility. Due to the limitation of absorption, taking smaller doses of 100 to 200 milligrams throughout the day rather than one large dose is generally recommended. The next supplement that can play a role in boosting fertility and supporting a healthy pregnancy is omega-3, more commonly known as fish oil. So let's begin with the basics. Omega-3 fatty acids are like the superheroes of the nutrition world. They're essential fat that our body needs for various functions. Your body can't produce omega-3 on its own, so you need to get them from food or supplements. Omega-3 comes in three main types, EPA, DHA, and ALA, and can be found in foods such as fatty fish, shellfish, nuts, seeds, and green. Out of these, DHA is especially important when it comes to fertility health. Why are these fatty acids relevant to conception and pregnancy? Picture this, omega-3 fatty acids could be the missing puzzle piece in your fertility journey. They play a role in hormone regulation, which is important for ovulation, increasing blood flow to the uterus, reducing inflammation in the body and improving the ability of the embryo to implant in the uterus, all of which can create an environment conducive to conception. Plus, they might even give a little boost to male fertility by enhancing sperm quality. A 2019 study looked at data from 900 women to find out if there was a connection between omega-3 fatty acid supplements and chances of conceiving spontaneously in a given menstrual cycle. The women were all 30 to 44 years old and had been trying to conceive for less than three months. None of the women had a history of infertility. Researchers adjusted for age, obesity, prior pregnancy, race and vitamin D intake and followed up with the women after one year. They found that women who took an omega-3 supplement were almost two times more likely to get pregnant on their own versus the woman who didn't take the supplement. 
When choosing an omega-3 supplement, there are a couple of things to consider. Firstly, the amount of omega-3. A supplement may say on the front that it contains 1000 milligrams of fish oil per capsule. However, if you turn on the back, you'll read that EPA and DHA, which is the good stuff, are only 300 milligrams combined. You want to look for a supplement that contains a large component being the combined EPA and DHA. The second thing to consider is the form of omega-3. The triglyceride is the natural form of fish oil that is found in fish. Although fish oil has to be converted to ethyl ester form during processing, some manufacturers choose to leave it there to save costs. However, the triglyceride form is safer, more stable and is better utilized by the body. Look for a product that contains mainly triglyceride with minimal or no ethyl ester. And the last thing to consider is the freshness. Omega-3s are prone to going rancid. Once they go bad, they'll have a foul smell and become less potent or even harmful. Always check the date, smell the product, and don't use fish oils that are out of date. The adequate intake for omega-3 suggested by NIH in pregnancy is 1.4 grams. If you are considering to take a supplement, look for a product that contains high levels of both EPA and DHA to ensure you are getting sufficient levels before and during pregnancy to support baby's development. The last supplement I took during my pregnancy journey was vitamin D. Vitamin D, or the sunshine vitamin as we know, helps our bodies absorb calcium, promoting strong bones and overall health, but it also has a role in fertility. Having a good level of vitamin D stored in the body can have a strong positive impact on female fertility. According to a 2017 study, lower vitamin D levels were associated with more women not conceiving easily on their own. Also, findings from a systematic review including 11 studies with 2,700 women on vitamin D status and outcomes of assisted reproductive treatment show that compared to women with deficient or insufficient vitamin D status, women with adequate vitamin D had more live birth, more positive pregnancy tests and more clinical pregnancies. Furthermore, in men, vitamin D has been shown to have a positive impact on sperm health and there is a clear relationship between better blood levels of vitamin D and better semen quality. There are several ways to boost your vitamin D level. Firstly, the sun is one of the best sources of vitamin D. Aim to get about 10 minutes of sunlight on your skin daily. But if you are someone like me who sits in a building all day long, this may not be the most reliable option for you. So secondly, you can eat foods that are high in vitamin D such as seafood, fatty fish, dairy, plants, milk, juice and tofu. However, sometimes sunshine and diet aren't enough. Unsurprisingly, about 1 billion people worldwide have vitamin D deficiency, while 50% of the population have vitamin D insufficiency. The problem is that vitamin D deficiency often remains undiagnosed or is untreated. The last option is you may need to take vitamin D in a supplement form. Prenatal multivitamins generally contain about 400 to 600 international units of vitamin D, which will only maintain blood vitamin D levels and not treat deficiency. Therefore, testing vitamin D levels is a key first step to determine if deficiency is present. With an understanding of your personal vitamin D levels, a qualified medical professional can help you determine an appropriate and safe dosage. Depending on where you are in the world, there are many different types of vitamin D supplements to help manage your vitamin D insufficiency. Regardless of the form, since vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin, it is best not to take it on an empty stomach. For maximum absorption, take it with your largest meal of the day. So there we have it folks. It's clear that CoQ10, Omega-3 and vitamin D plays a multifaceted role in fertility and reproductive health. While it's not a magic solution, maintaining adequate levels of these vitamins could be a positive step towards your dream of starting a family. Thanks for joining us today. And if you found this video helpful, remember to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and share it with friends who might benefit. As always, if you're considering making changes to your health routine, consult a healthcare professional. Until next time, stay healthy and stay amazing.